I always test my lawnmowers first time with no air cleaner on them. This way if they're hard to start I can dump a little gas in and prime them. I can also see exactly what the throttle is doing that's hooked up to the governor. And because this carburetor has the squeezy bulb to prime it, that means it has no choke. I can look in there and I can see if it's working. It is working. It's shooting fuel in. This particular type of carburetor is somewhat problematic. It's actually a plastic carburetor on an aluminum gas tank. Back here where the carburetor attaches to the intake manifold where it sits onto the gas tank, there's a wide section about that big across that has no screws in it, one on each end. The plastic warps in the middle and the little diaphragm that's under here that makes the carburetor all work properly and sucks up the gas gets sucked in sideways, has a little wrinkle in it, and then when these engines run, they chug black smoke and they go pop, 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 and they rev up and down. Well, it just takes a little kit to fix it that costs four dollars. And there's what the kit looks like. It consists of one neoprene diaphragm and one black paper gasket. To reinstall the pull cover, let's see what year this was made. Third set of numbers, which is here, the first two digits say 94, so that tells me it was made in 1994. This is true for every Briggs and Stratton lawnmower ever made. Well, that means this lawnmower is actually older than Garrett and probably wiser too. Next, I check to see how old the fuel is. Well, it has next to nothing in it, so that doesn't really matter. But the more dark yellow it is, the older it is. And the next thing I check for is blobs of water floating around in the bottom. And there may be a bit of rust particles, but no water. So, time to top her up with fresh stuff. I recommend every spring putting all fresh gas in your lawnmower to make sure it starts easy. Stale gas, which is old gas, doesn't start very good. Well, at the price of gas now, that lawnmower just stole a dollar from me. And in my eyes, that's one less beer. Now, if you happen to have a Briggs & Stratton lawnmower that has the choke on it, of course, that would be a plate that you would see there, they start very easily with a little trick. You always tip the lawnmower up and tilt the spark plug towards the ground and hold it for two seconds and then start it afterwards. That primes a little chamber that's near the top of the carburetor here with fuel so that the little fuel pumping diaphragm doesn't have to pump all the fuel up after it's sat a while. Every time the motor is cold on an older Briggs & Stratton with a choke, this usually makes it start in one pull. It's a great selling feature when you're selling lawnmowers because every lawnmower you walk up to and show the customer it starts in one pull, they think you're the best fixer guy in the world. Even though this is the wrong kind of lawnmower to do that with, I'm just showing you an example. I tipped it up for two seconds. Now, this one I'm going to give it a few squirts of gas. And I'm going to assume it's going to start right up. Let's do it. Well, just as I predicted, a one pull wonder. Impressive for the customers. The way I sharpen 99% of any lawnmower I'm working on, I don't remove the blade. That's just too much work. If you use your cheapy little $20 angle grinder, you sharpen the blade with the back side of the wheel. Watch me. There's the cutting edge. If you hold the grinder on the blade like this and stroke it with the back side of the wheel, it puts exactly the same edge on it as if you took the blade off. Watch. Now that I've got the top edge just perfect like factory, I give the bottom edge just a tiny cut.
Every time when you tip any lawnmower to clean the grass out or sharpen the blade with the muffler side pointing down, what happens is oil runs into the valve spring chamber. That's the valve spring chamber, this little pocket that's held on by two screws beside the muffler. Probably gets about that deep of oil in there and there's supposed to be no oil in there. Well, the valve spring chamber has this little bump up there and that's a PCV output, positive crankcase ventilation. That sends the smoke that's inside your crankcase, like all cars have too, back into the carburetor to get reburned. Well, if you go to start your engine immediately after you've stood it up from being tipped over, the oil that's in that spring chamber will blow up through the PCV tube and get blown right into the carburetor choke the engine out, make all kinds of blue smoke, coat your spark plug, and even fill the air cleaner up with oil, and then cause it to run too rich because it's got too much suction with a clogged air filter. This is such a common thing. I think almost every person who has a lawnmower has done this. The trick is, after you've tipped your lawnmower, it doesn't hurt it one bit. Just let it sit for four or five minutes before you attempt to start it, and it will be as good as it used to be. We're off. Oh, the first time the smell of new cut grass in the spring reminds me of when I was a kid. Now I'm just one of these kind of guys.